So we're already able to generate AI renders straight from text and we've already started integrating this directly into our architectural software. And if AI is creating pretty decent results already, just from image detection, what do you think is going to happen in the architecture industry when we incorporate the information from our BIM models directly into these tools? How powerful do you think these tools will be then? Hey guys, how's it going? For those of you that don't know me, I'm Dev and I currently work in an architectural office as a BIM specialist. And in this video today, I want to give my personal opinion of why I believe the architecture industry is about to be disrupted massively in the next few years when it comes to architectural imagery and arcviz. And we're going to focus on this specifically through the use of BIM and artificial intelligence. A couple of weeks ago, I made a video about a plugin that lets you create AI visuals or AI renders directly from our architecture software, which is Revit. And this is currently one of the most industries popular software. This plugin takes our current work in progress view. And then with a bit of text, it's actually going to render and generate a pretty convincing image of what this scene could look like. And this is what I'm currently showing on the screen. I've left a link to that video in the description or on the screen somewhere, just in case you want to check it out and the results that we get. This video got some pretty decent exposure. Some people were really excited about the possibilities of incorporating AI tools into art. Some people thought the outputs weren't good enough or consistent enough to be used yet, which is totally fair. And some people just flat out didn't like the fact that AI was getting into the creative industry and that we're going to have no more jobs left. This video is mainly going to focus on the concerns that people had in terms of the accuracy of the renders, how reliable it is um, and the limits it has. And I want to give my opinion or prediction on why it will adopt at a much faster rate than people think. So the main critique that people had on these images, and just so you know, I'm not going to be talking about the ethics of AI art. That's a completely different topic. I'm going to be looking at the more fundamental problems or technical problems of what was generated with the images. So the first problem was the fact that it couldn't identify some objects or edges properly and it was being very easily confused and this caused it to have some very weird blends, right? Objects would end up blurring together or just it couldn't identify the object at all properly. And two, some of the materials couldn't be identified properly or they were assigned inconsistently in the scene and they would end up causing weird blends throughout the scene. And these are the two main problems that people had with the output, right? These are like quite fundamental problems. And in my eyes, they're not that hard to fix with the technology or the information that we have today. First, let's look at why these problems occur. This AI render plugin is probably used on the same neural network that is trained on hundreds of millions of images that are quite generic, right? It's looking at art, illustration, random photography, all across the web, a whole bunch of random stuff. And this is obviously very useful when you need to identify a lot of things such as people, random objects, lighting, colors, and so much more stuff just to determine what the actual object is in that image. It's essentially trained to detect as much as possible from very limited information, which is essentially just an image, figure out what's going on, extract and either blend multiple images together, or it ends up analyzing what these color values are on the image to represent that object. And then through its own deep learning process, it's able to then generate a new image from what it's learned before. It's quite a complex process. I'm simplifying this quite a bit. But essentially the main thing I want you to grasp here is that it's taking an image, it's analyzing all these pixels and using deep learning, it can then identify what the objects are in this and then it spits out your current output, which is purely based on RGB colors in the image that you have. So how does BIM specifically fix this? For those of you that don't know, BIM stands for Building Information Modeling. And the key point here is that I stands for information. You can use this information that already exists in our scene and feed it to the AI renderer to help it produce more consistent and reliable renders. Let's look at this example of an extruded square. This same piece can easily create a room. First, we start with the floor. If you rotate and copy this multiple times, you then end up getting the walls. If you duplicate the floor above, you get a ceiling. Now we know it's a room, right? But to a computer, this is just the same shape copied six times. Right now, AI has to identify and recognize the edges and planes in this scene here in order to determine what a wall is and what a floor is. And then it has to differentiate varying squares from being a door, a TV on the wall, a photo, maybe a cupboard. There's so many factors here that I can end up confusing these images with, right? Obviously, these are trains on loads of images, which is why it's being quite accurate right now. But this is where it can fail. In software like Revit or any other BIM software, we're already identifying or defining what this piece of geometry is as an object. So we're saying this is a floor, this is a wall, or this is a ceiling. And if AI can now read these pixels with certainty because it knows what the objects are, think about how much errors it's going to reduce. And just to confirm something, Revit isn't BIM and BIM isn't Revit. Revit is a BIM software. 
You can easily incorporate this into any other software as long as you can store data or information into this geometry or these objects. Essentially, as long as there's something to read. This could be something as simple as how you're naming the object or the layer that it's on or how you're naming the groups. There's so many ways you can incorporate BIM into your model through plugins or through different systems, but Revit isn't the only BIM software. That's just one thing I wanna make clear in this video. And regarding the material problems, we already know nowadays that we're able to generate material ID passes. For those of you that don't know what material ID passes are, these are these funky images that your render engine gives you when you render a scene and it gives the materials in your scene as a flat color. It's usually used to identify which materials in your scene are used where. So in Photoshop or any other post-processing program, you can easily select where the material is and edit it how you need. We're easily able to generate depth maps. So we're able to distinguish what's in the foreground and background and I'm sure AI can now use this to figure out what the perspective is if it hasn't done a good job of it already. And in BIM software, it wouldn't be hard to generate views where all your walls would be one color, all your ceilings would be another color, the floors and furniture would be different colors, you know, respectively. And then you'd end up creating a custom object or category pass, right? So now imagine where these AI renderers would be when they have the information directly from the scene. One, it has the geometry, it has what you're seeing in your viewport, but all these additional maps and information you can help supply for it. Think about how much confusion and uncertainty you're gonna end up removing from the scene and end up producing a more accurate or reliable render. And the key point here is that it's going to automatically extract this stuff. A lot of objects already in Revit, or this is the example I'm using, they've specifically got information tagged in them because we want to filter out these stuff when it comes to different view templates or scales that we're on. So it's not like we have to end up applying a material to an object, right? It's not, if it takes all this additional amount of work, you might as well set up a render. So this is why I can't really compare it to something in SketchUp. But in Revit, you, it takes a lot more time to say texture something, but we already know that the category is set, the geometry is set, we have different stuff for different scales. A lot of this stuff exists because we need this information to filter out different stuff for architectural drawings at different scales. Even then, it could get to the point where you wouldn't necessarily even have to add a timber material to an object. You just write the word timber and a material tag, and then when you render it through AI, you'd end up getting different variations of timber spit out for you, so you're then able to see different variations and end up deciding which one you want later on. There's no need to hard define which texture you want to use because that takes time when you want to end up switching these textures to see different materials. AI will do it for you to determine what's best for your scene given the current circumstances. And I'll say accurate here very gently. If I show 10 people a detailed black and white sketch that was annotated and I explained everything I wanted as best as I could, I'm sure all of these people would see and interpret this information differently, right? In terms of lighting, tone, atmosphere, AI is not a mind reader, okay? It essentially works the same way humans do. It will take some existing objects or references, which is inspiration, and then it will figure out what's going on, and then it will either mix these images together or through the references, it then identify what an object is and create a new variation of that object into the scene. And this is, again, essentially how humans' brains work. This is why it's going through the process of deep learning. So some of you have seen how our industry has adapted from when we went from hand drawing to CAD, then we went from CAD to 3D modeling, and now we're incorporating BIM in our workflows, right? And also think about how complicated it was to produce high-end 3D visuals back in the day. You have to be amazing at 3DS Max. Creating a scene would probably take weeks or a month, and to actually generate an image, even just for a preview, it maybe take a day or maybe a couple of days. I've heard people say that when they were students, they had to leave the render on overnight. Well, nowadays, students can create renders pretty easily through the use of Enscape, Twinmotion, Lumion, and there's probably a few other software out there that I'm missing. But these softwares are integrated really well into the architecture workflows, and it allows them to create it in terms of a fraction of the time and effort. What these real-time render engines have done to the ArcViz industry, I think AI is going to be the next leap beyond that. And obviously, hand drawing in CAD isn't dead today, and neither are high-end visualizers. They definitely have their place in their industry. But the skill gap has reduced into a more level playing field, and the industry has definitely shifted from where it once was. And another reason why I think AI is gonna be adopted at a much faster rate than people think is because of how easy and intuitive it is for people to use. We're already at the place where you can generate an AI render just because the plugin's already able to read the geometry that's in your scene, you're already able to input a bit of text that you want, and the plugin will spit out a render for you directly. It also doesn't require any special training, just 30 minutes or so to understand what's going on and you can generate images from the get-go. It just extracts what's in your scene currently, you input a bit of text and then you get an output. And then if you don't like the output or the output fails, you can then generate another one or just end up changing your text a bit. It's a very iterative process, so then you can easily improve in a very short amount of time because it's so easy to change the inputs and you're seeing the outputs incredibly fast. And this is what design is in terms of an iterative process. And because it's so responsive, it allows essentially anyone to get better at it. 
And this is something I want to mention. 3DS Max and V-Ray back in the day had a high skill gap and it took a lot of time to get into, right? Enscape and Twinmotion and Lumion, it made it a fraction of the time in terms of what you needed to invest to get pretty decent results. AI is now the next step in terms of the curve. So it's going like this in terms of effort and output. You can now produce an image that's probably not as good as a renderer, even that's done in Enscape or Lumion, but just because of how quick you're able to get this output, people are going to choose it just in terms of how efficient it is. And let's not also forget the fact that the AEC has a massive problem when it comes to all the deadlines and it's notorious for all the overworking that it has compared to other industries, right? If this tool now lets you effortlessly see rough variations of your concept for literally a fraction of the input what you previously had to do or produce outputs you wouldn't have thought of, then why not use it to your advantage to at least try work smarter instead of working harder and producing all these different varying outputs that won't get chosen at the end of the day because only one's going to be chosen. At least you're able to see in rough glimpses why your concept might work or why it might not work in a very visual manner, right? Architecture is a very visual field. You can either use this to critique something in the design process or even go to a client and be like, hey, I don't think this concept's gonna work. Some people are flat out against AI renderers because they're like, this isn't gonna produce the final image for me. It's not what I had in my head. That's one argument. And as I said previously, AI is not a mind reader. But the other side is that it's producing variations that you might not have thought of just because it's so efficient at producing outputs, right? Very limited input, producing a lot of outputs. That's the main advantage of these AI tools. And I guess that's it for this video. Please let me know what your thoughts are in the comments below. And if you enjoyed this video, um, I know for some of you, this is quite a sensitive topic. I'm not trying to step on any toes here. I just want to give my opinion on why I see the architectural visualization industry or ArcViz industry heading in the future. Again, I don't think this is going to take out the top renderers by any means. I do think it is, however, going to give a lot more people the accessibility the accessibility to create their own renders and test out different concepts. So maybe some low end or mid end work might be challenged. At the end of the day, this is just my opinion and what I personally believe will happen. This can definitely go a different direction. If you did enjoy this video, please leave a like. It does help me a lot in terms of the YouTube algorithm. Subscribe if you want to see more content. Yeah, take care guys. Cheers.